Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks, Michael. Really interesting items. I hope they find the solution to bicycles shooting through red lights. Uh, I know I, I cycled this morning, so I, I wouldn't mind if you, if you caught a few. Um, so I was, asked, I was invited here today uh, through Equium, because we're doing a lot of work with Equium. We have three large sites with them at the moment. And they kindly invited me here today and to talk about what we're doing with them uh, on 10 engagement platforms. But when we looked at it, and I looked at the, I suppose the panel of who were speaking, I thought it was relevant maybe to, to spread the net a bit and maybe tell people what we're doing in the industry, in JLL, and in other fields. So um, uh, I just want to maybe go through this briefly, but I want to go back to Equium at the end because that's the main point I'm kind of here today. Of. Um, we know technology, you know, everyone's talking about it. We know it's going to be a game changer. You need to engage in it. 90% of people are doing it. 90% uh, of people uh, are, are, sorry, talking about it. 90% plus know it's going to make their lives easier. But really, the investment hasn't really caught on yet. So only 30% 30, 30 of companies are investing in it. And that probably comes back to Carl's point with CFOs, because it's all about the money at the end of the day. And you need to convince a lot of people on, on the route, on, on the journey towards that. But we're catching up on it, and it will change. Um, and it'll probably change quicker than we think. Um, I suppose trend spotting, uh, changing mindsets. I got to put my hand up. I was, I, was, I was surprised to be asked here today, because I'm very poor when it comes to technology of any kind. Uh, but in saying that, at any given day, I'm logging into multiple systems, um, doing multiple functions on loads of different platforms. And that says a lot, because that means they're easy to use, they're user-friendly, and, and if they weren't, I mightn't be using them. So that's a really important point. And any system that really works well is user-friendly and works well. So that's, mindsets are a big thing. And it's, I suppose it's important for, for management and companies to understand that, because you've got to work with people on the journey to... to to bring them along, help them, coax them along. Because that can be a big challenge to get everyone on your team actually working these and working them properly. Uh, M&A and activity investment growth. Um, as I said, this is obviously improving and growing. I can tell you in JLL in the US, uh, we have a company called JLL Spark. That's invested 100 million in prop tech alone. Uh, and that's growing and they're looking at new opportunities all the time. Um, I can tell you in the local, the local uh, Dublin office in JLL, um, where I'm in the property management side, we've just rolled out a new Yardy Voyager bespoke system to us. That investment locally was close to a million euro just for, from our office. So it is expensive, but if you're not doing it, um, you know, clients, clients want accuracy of the detail they're getting, they want speed and they want reliability. When I say accuracy, I don't mean the information is wrong, I mean they want accuracy of what we spent on a building last week or last month. And they need that data and they need it quick. Uh, and we're working with, 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 with the great companies here, mentioned already, Green Property and iPut, who are, I suppose, they're looking at PropTech a lot, and they're, they're driving it. Uh, AI, machine learning, we probably, we probably, there's probably more of it going on than we think, um, because it's kind of unseen, it's in the background, we don't really see it. But to give you a few examples, um, BMS systems and buildings, they're getting a lot more sophisticated, they're collecting data all the time from, from the property. Um, be it environment, traffic flows, uh, air quality, et cetera, and they're using that information to build, build a data system of how to run that, that building better. Um, we have it ourselves in, for, for payment systems, um, for all our invoices that go through a, a particular system, and each time that has been collected on, the prop, on, that, on that company, be it address, VAT number, contacts, what we're paying them, and we can look at that of what we're paying them month on month, year on year, sort of building up information on companies all the time. Um, smart tech, uh, there's loads of examples, and Michael had a few earlier um, that we're using. I mean, I know Rent-A-Kill used a similar system to the bins with bait boxes, so they'll know if they're empty or not, and they'll just go to the ones that are empty. Um, we've come across a really good company just last week, Ziggy Tech, who are using the Sigfox and the IoT um, to, uh, to basically measure um, utilities. So no longer do you have to send somebody out to check a meter reading to, to raise a bill and charge a tenant. They can do it remotely by just putting small little devices on items. And that's really, really clever stuff. So we're, and we're using them straight off. Um, other ones, I've just some, some ones here. You'd know, Lynette Watch use Lighter Trace. It's well known. MCR have a very useful um, app on their phones. Uh, in, in, in more, I suppose, um, MCR are a very good security company uh, nationwide. And in some maybe high security sites, if they can't ring somebody, they just shake their phone and they'll send a, an automatic uh, note to or, or call to the local guard station. So it's simple things like that that are really useful, really helpful. Sustainability retrofitting. Um, 
uh, in JLL are, are obviously all over this. We have an in-house sustainability team ourselves. Um, we have a company called Upstream that required in the UK. So this is obviously uh, high in everyone's agenda, especially from a, a new build. Um, I'm on the property management side, but I just want to give you one or two examples that was outside of it. So I, I spoke to our hotels division. They're dealing with a company called Sonder, um, apartment hotel uh, uh, company. They have two, base, two bases in, Ireland, in Dublin at the moment, and it's all app-based. So if you want to uh, book a room, log in, uh, you know, clear your account, uh, order something to the room, it's all app-based. You, you may not necessarily meet anybody on your whole journey, but it's simple, easy to use. I'll come back to Ekum in a sec. Um, this is um, uh, building uh, Johnson Controls, smartest building in Ireland. Our p and team said this would be useful. Um, and I think this has been shared after, so it's an interesting video to look through and look at the data. But that's, again, it goes back to AI. It's gathering information all the time, internal temperature, environment, climate, uh, you know, traffic flows, all that information, building, building data all the time to better and efficiently uh, run that building. Um, so come back to Equium. So I, I could talk for hours on Equium, and, 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 and we will after, and even after this, feel free to give me a call. Um, we use Equium in three large sites. Um, we've been working with a very progressive uh, landlord called Spear Street Capital, working out of New York. So they introduced them originally uh, in Cherrywood, went to Belfield, and then Blackstone uh, pointed them in uh, the atrium. Um, so we see Equium as, as almost the glue to bring everything together. Um, before Equium and these platforms came along, um, basically, you know, we did a lot of stuff. So we, we, did, we did things like, you know, you do your markets, they're easy to do, you have your yoga classes, you meet tenants, see what they need. But the problem was, you know, you send out notices or you send out, you know, email or reminders or uh, you put, you put the notifications up. You, you didn't know who read them or if anybody read them or who, more importantly, who didn't read them. So the problem was you just didn't know the traction. You didn't get that. But Equium just do that and, and do it so easily. So at the start of the setup side, we'd see it in a, in a few different sections. So at the setup side, every tenant is, is, is you're trying to get everyone, every tenant to engage. So the three main schemes we have, we have 80% of those tenants engaging, and that's thousands of people. And they're on that platform. So once they're on, they take the data as regards what they want from the park, when they want the activities, how often they want them, a whole list of things, great, great data. And from that then, we, we shape our budgets and our spend during the year for that. And then it's a, it's a two-way street, so there's constant communication from, between us and the tenants, um, especially when it comes to the money side. And then, um, but through that process, Equin can track everything. So they'll know, if they do a post, to do the event coming up, they'll know exactly who's engaging and who's not. Um, and that's really useful. And it's useful to know the tenants who don't actually engage. So tenants who don't engage, like, okay, there's a problem here. And we've dealt with them. So we've, some of the banks may have different uh, security systems than we would have or general tenants would have. And we've worked with them in a few schemes. So, okay, what's your problem? Can you log in? What's the issue? And we've worked with them and we've fixed it. And now they're on board. So it's really, really important to include everybody in your campus on this. Um, so the startup side is, is, I suppose, kind of the easy bit because everyone's, everyone's, you know, everyone's optimistic. This has got to work. It's great. But keeping it going is the real challenge. Um, in Cherrywood, we have a dedicated person just doing this and nothing else. I know, I know uh, Green Reed have it in, in Central Park as well. They have a dedicated team. And that's the only really way it works. Um, and it's not there to... to, to to move space for the landlord, it's just for the tenants only because they're paying it through service charges, um, and and you keep that you keep that that fresh. So there needs to be weekly posts, weekly events, spot prizes. Keep it moving, keep it fresh, and it's constantly changing. So that, that's our challenge to, to, on that. But we but the Equin platform allows us to keep plugging into it and going, who's involved, who, who's getting involved, who's not, what's to pick up in events. Uh, one last point, I suppose, what, I see, what we see is, and we come across it a bit, and there is a bit of pushback from some tenants going, listen, I don't see the benefit, what's all this about? Sure, I'm not logged in, what's it all about? And we can easily tell tenants, and we have, we have these conversations, kind of at maybe at the accounts level or management level, and we can tell them straight away there's X number, 100 people actually logged in, and you know, you had 50 people at the yoga class last week, and they mightn't really know that, but we can tell them all that information, and then they they come on board and they go, okay, we see this is working and, and it's a journey. But you do need to spend a lot of time with tenants to actually convince them and, and, and show them it works. Um, I suppose, listen, what's coming down the track? We'd all like to see trends and what's, what's, what's next. Um, you know, drone technology is an interesting one. Um, and the drone technology was that, 
Visually, they came out, okay, this would be great. Every landlord in Dublin has a problem with, 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 uh, with birds when it comes to, especially the Docklands area and glazing and the cost of cleaning and maintaining and all that, it's, it's huge. So um, they said, great, this could, be, this, could be a, this could work. But they discovered quickly that the, 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 the seagulls uh, get quite aggressive and they attack the drone. Uh, and it's, it's, it's grand two, two, two birds fighting themselves, they'll all fly away. Once the drone, drone gets damaged, it only has one way to go, and that's down six flipping floors. So health and safety wasn't really an option on this one. But they, there is a company in the Netherlands called Robird, um, and they're, they're, seven, they're, they're 10 years in, in a prototype model, and they're, they're making a robotic uh, hawk, and they're experimenting, and, and experimenting it and using it on airports. So maybe that will come in down the line, but then it's obviously, it needs to be cost efficient. Um, drone technology, you know, uh, this might, might sound wacky, but will, will, all, will, will things be delivered in, with, with drones in a couple of years' time? Do we need to put retrofit uh, drone delivery chutes on, on the top of buildings to facilitate this? Who, who knows? Uh, and obviously your packaging will, will, will change as, as, uh, dramatic, drastically. This is just a, another kind of interesting example, um, how things are built. So this is a 3D printed steel bridge, um, all, all one piece. Um, so there's no moving parts, there's no, no bolts, no nuts. It, it, it's, it's one piece, so in theory it should last an awful lot longer than, than, than traditional build. Um, but just it's interesting how we're actually making new things and doing things. Um, this is another interesting example. Um, this is a, I suppose a, um, a fire sprinkler system where it doesn't, it doesn't cover a whole office area, it just goes to the actual area where the fire is. There's loads of examples of this out there all the time, um, but um, and this will be shared after, but if you have any questions, I know we're having a session afterwards, uh, feel free to come to me. Um, have any questions, yeah?